Hello again. I finished my last movie with this image, which shows the double magnetic polarity over northern pole and how it affects the polar vortex. But now I would like to come back to the southern pole. In previous part I was showing you disturbances in the location of the south polar cusp. Here we can see that the opening is placed right on the nose of the bow shock. There is an open field line in the middle of the frontal cusp. It's a sign that in this area Earth is connected straight to the IMF. It's a sign that in this area Earth is connected straight to the IMF. This field line is responsible for the enormous breach in the middle of magnetopause. Nothing makes me happier than using different monitors to explain single phenomenon. On SWMF magnetosphere YCAT we can track the field line further than in Visbart. Anyway, here you can see the readings from November 29. While on Visbart I'm showing you the data recorded on November 10, yet they seem to work with each other perfectly. And this is the time to start talking about the most important part – frequency of occurrence. Let's move back a couple hours back to the beginning of November 10. It is clear that at this time magnetosphere is in much better condition. Polar cusps are placed in the right positions and there are a couple close field lines which behave as they supposed to. One hour later, the dipole tilt is getting stronger. Closed field lines are changing their angles. After another hour, the frontal cusp is much more visible. At 3 UTC most of normal field lines is gone, only one can still be seen in the front of magnetosphere. Frontal cusp starts to cross the ecliptic plane. Finally around 4 UTC disturbances reach their strongest point. Typical closed field lines are totally gone and frontal cusp reaches over the ecliptic plane. At 5 UTC the process is reversed as magnetosphere starts to regain its natural shape. Around 9 UTC magnetosphere started to look in a more typical way. But not for too long, as one hour later the dipole axis started to tilt in opposite direction. This time the north cusp starts to move towards the front of magnetosphere. At the same time, southern pole seems to be divided just as the northern one was a couple hours earlier.
After noon, Earth starts to be tripolar again, but now the configuration is opposite, with single pole on the North Pole and two poles in the South. Southern polar cusps are making two holes on both sides of the magnetosphere. At 14 UTC the additional cusps are clearly defined. Notice that the field lines are gaining strength at the openings. Another open field line connected to the southern pole punctures front of the bow shock. However, the second dipole tilt seems to be weaker. This time closed field lines are visible all the time. In the afternoon, the angle of dipole tilt is getting smaller. Around 21st UTC, the double cusps located on sides of magnetosphere start to disappear. At 22 UTC, the east-west connectivity switches from south pole to the north one. At the same time, the shape of magnetosphere comes to its normal state again. After the second zero point is reached, magnetic dipole starts to tilt in opposite direction. Of course, the maximum angle is reached around 4 UTC on the next day. And this is when I can start to talk about the patterns. Because the process is taking place every day, I was able to use the current SWMF readings to explain older data in Visbart. Look at the magnetosphere two days later at the same time. And one week later, on November 20th, disturbances are visible day after day at the same hours. This is the key to a big part of problems which I was trying to deal with in last months. Especially the daily geomagnetic jolts, which became weaker in last couple days. What is probably caused by this weird wave of increased solar wind density? which doesn't look like a CME nor a coronal hole stream. Anyway, this part allows me to track the evolution of disturbances in a longer period of time. That's why I will be able to learn a lot of additional information. But the amount of data is huge and I won't even start in this episode. Of course, most of you are supposed to ask me now if such behavior of magnetosphere is not something normal. It was the first thing which I've checked. As you probably know, the angle of dipole tilt depends mostly on the orbital cycle of Earth. So we should see the same pattern each single year. But on November 10th, 2001, there is no sign of disturbances. If you would like to see an example of healthy magnetosphere, 
this is one for the entire day the condition remains stable six years later in November 2007 magnetosphere still looks pretty normal and it seems that 2009 was the last year of calm because one year later magnetosphere started to behave like this what is of course taking place till today funny since the beginning of anomalies NASA and other space agencies still didn't manage to make any official statement regarding the geomagnetic disturbances not to mention about changing the space weather models I've made it in less than two years just by myself and when I was beginning my knowledge about astrophysics was close to zero anyway I have still plenty of work to do as the new data will allow me to make couple improvements of my 3D model so for now I can dismiss the class for the end a glance at ionospheric disturbances you can try to guess the shape of new equator by looking at the electrons be safe peace